Hi, in today's video I would like to cover two topics that I couldn't quite cover in my last video. I would like to show you how you can model compound gears and I would like to show you how you can add chamfers to the teeth of your gears. I have opened up a new file and I've already created the first gear. I will now go back into the gear generator and generate the second gear. This gear will have many fewer teeth than the first gear and for demonstration purposes I will also make it slightly thicker than the previous gear. And then we press OK and then our second gear shows up. Now that we have two gears we must combine them into becoming a single gear. So first we go to Solid, Modify, Move Copy and what we will move is a component and in particular it will be this smaller gear and then we move that up by 20 millimeters, which is exactly the same as the thickness of the bottom gear. Next, we go to Modify, Combine, we capture the position, and the target body will be the lower gear, and the tool body will be the upper gear, and the operation will be Join. So click OK on this. And now if we look inside of our components, we see that one component has one body in it, which is our combined body, our complete compound gear, and the other component only has the origin and a few of the sketches. So this component is no longer necessary, so we can remove it. There is one unique aspect of compound gears that I would like to discuss. Most gears need to be fixed rigidly to their shafts because they need to be able to transmit torque into or out of that shaft. Compound gears do not need to do this and so these must be mounted in a way that they can rotate freely with minimal wear and friction. This is most commonly done by mounting the gear to a shaft and then having that shaft rotate between two bearings. But I'd like to show you a different technique. And in this case, the shaft is held stationary and the gear will rotate around the shaft supported by two bearings that are mounted inside of the gear. So we create a sketch on the top face of the gear and we will drag out a hole of 22 millimeters plus a little bit of space. And this is for a 608 bearing. Now you can of course use whatever bearing you like, but I'll just take 608 for now. I hit E for extrude and I pocket this down seven and a half millimeters. Um, it's seven millimeters thickness for a 608 bearing and I give it a little bit of extra space to ensure that the bearing is not proud of the face of the gear. So we hit OK and now we want a similar pocket on the other end of the gear so that we can have a bearing there too. So we construct the mid plane and we select the two gear faces and then we go to create mirror and then we mirror a feature which will be this pocket and we mirror that around the plane that we just created and we press OK and then we have another pocket for another bearing. The final thing we'll do is create a hole for the shaft to go through. Now we only want the shaft to touch the bearings but not actually the gear itself. So this shaft actually needs to be a little bit larger than the shaft to ensure that there is no contact. So the 608 bearing is meant for an 8 millimeter shaft, so I will make this hole 10 millimeters to ensure that there is no contact. Finish the sketch, hit E for extrude, put that all the way, hit OK, and there we have a finished gear. The advantage to this technique is that you no longer need to create space for the bearings inside the housing of your gear train. And this allows you to make the housing a little bit more compact. The downside is that instead of the inner race, the outer race of the bearing is now rotating. And this causes the RPM limit of the bearing to be a little bit lower than the specifications would imply. However, usually I don't get anywhere near the RPM limit for a bearing anyway. I'd now like to show you two different techniques for adding a chamfer to the teeth of your gear. For the first technique, I've already created the gear in a generator, of course, We'll start with a sketch on this vertical plane. And first I project the top and bottom surfaces of the gear into my sketch using P for project. And then I draw a construction line 
going from the origin upward, and I'm looking for this perpendicular constraint. And then from the middle of this new line, I draw a horizontal line going straight out. And the length of that line doesn't matter. Next, using regular geometry, I draw a triangle like this. And I'll just give this some dimensions. Now, I don't want the chamfer just on the top face of the gear. I also want it down here on the bottom. So to achieve this, I will go for a mirror and select this triangle. And the mirror line will be this line that we made before. And then we press OK. And now these two triangles can still move around. So what I'll do first is select this top edge and select this projected line and make these collinear. And now the only degree of freedom we have left is this side to side motion. So one thing you could do is make this point coincident with this point. But if you zoom in real deep on this area over here, you see that there are in fact two points very close to each other. So you run the risk that you would select the wrong one. So another way to do it is to select this edge over here and this central line that we drew before and set the distance between those. Now, what must that distance be? Well, it'll be the module, which is two times the number of teeth plus two. And that gives you the outer diameter of a gear. But we don't want the outer diameter. We want the outer radius. So we divide the thing by two. And then the triangles are at the correct spot. Now we can finish the sketch. And then we go for revolve. And then the profiles will be both of these triangles. And the axis can either be the z-axis or this construction line that we made before. And then we hit OK. And then we have a chamfer that is a lot like the chamfer that a machinist would make into a gear using his lathe. I've now added a second gear to the design so I can show you the other technique. And for this, we simply go to the chamfer tool and then we rotate our camera around a little bit like this so we can draw a box that selects all the top edges of the gear. And then we do the same thing to select all the bottom edges of the gear. So we now have 100 edges selected and we enter a distance, let's say, of one millimeter. And this takes a little while to compute because it's quite a difficult geometry for Fusion 360. We hit OK, we wait again for a little while. And there is the second chamfer complete. Now, why would you want to add a chamfer to the teeth of your gear in the first place? And I can think of four reasons. First, if I delete this chamfer on this gear, and we imagine that these gears are made out of hardened steel, then this area over here near the corner of the teeth has a tendency to chip off. And one of the ways to prevent that is to preemptively remove the material, basically, by adding this chamfer. And a hardened steel chip inside your gear train will reduce its life very quickly. The second reason is that if you try to push these gears into mesh, these chamfers will help the two gears find each other so that they will go into mesh. Third, if you use the technique on the right here, uh, the chamfer counteracts the effect of elephant's footing in your 3D printer. So if your printer suffers from a little bit of elephant's footing, then these edges over here being a little bit too wide will cause the mesh of the gears to be quite a bit worse. And you can counteract that by adding the chamfer that you can see on this gear. And finally, as this old Tony teaches us, the chamfer makes the gear look a little nicer and you can charge more for parts that look nicer. I hope you found that interesting and informative. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.